law reform expert and guest Gary Jacobs and I are going to topple the existing narratives and law on child support. We at FITTV can safely say with confidence that there are few who understand child support as well as we do. This especially includes most judges and lawyers, experts as they say. The societal increase of dysfunctional children is growing so quickly and has often been said to be the result of the absent father. Few know he is often removed by law or handcuffed or both. The full impact is yet to be appreciated by the divorce courts, eager to swoop up the remaining money the interrogatory has within it that they can confiscate. Was that well said? That was perfect. You I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> and That's Gary, a mouthful. Okay, president of the Americans for Legal Reform and my favorite uh, reformer. What do you think about that opening? Let's start there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's true. You talk about you know experts and uh, you know what's an expert. And as I as as I said, somebody often, outside the law. <laughs> well, they're supposed to be governed by what is really the biggest crock of shit in family court, which is the best interests of the children. Right. That's supposed to govern everything. So. Even if they read something where they say hey, this doesn't make sense, supposed to say, you know what, this is not in the best interest of the child, so we're going to deviate, and that gives us the right to do X, Y, Z. But they don't because they don't care about the best interest. It's the best interest of the dollar. That's for sure. So I want to ask you, as somebody who might know, I mean, maybe you know, as a father, I know I'm a father. What makes a father a father in their eyes? If you ask New York State, it would be much. How much has he? Right. How, how much? Well, he I, I, you know. I mean, what that's, the, the con that's, the, that's it. What the courts do is they turn fathers into ATMs. Right. Because what, it, what, what is a father? Well, our instinct, it's innate for us to want to care for children. our young, for our children. And the wife. And, and the wife, our family. We, yeah. we want to, Absolutely. you know, uh, and, you know, women do this too to some extent, but it's innate that men over People the... People don't realize that that's true. Over the saying. thousands of years, this is in our yeah, brain that we right, want to right. take, take care that's of right. kids. And to deviate for a second, as I always tell people, I never met a man, never, who has money in his pocket and doesn't want to give his kids anything that right. he can give them right. with, with, within reason. I've never met a man who says, I'm not going to give money to my kids. Now, I've met them where they're not seeing their kids and they're being and tempted forced to, say, to give. And tempted to say that they might. But that's different. Yeah. But I've never met a man who, who, who doesn't want to pay for kids and has the ability to do it. So what makes, what makes a father is, is caring for your family for your and being there emotionally. That's more important. I've met many families who don't have money, really. Again, that's innate. So I it's think that people miss that, which the connection between right. being a father and taking care of your children, right. what it means to do well, that. Well, listen, how can you be a father when you see your kid for Wednesday and dinner and every other weekend? Right. It's bullshit. You're not a father and because that, what is it? You see your kid for dinner. You know, let me tell you, grandparents, uh, visitors see the kids more, more than that. Being a, being a father, being a parent, a mother or a father. You, yeah, you mentioned father. father right, yeah. But I should, I should use the word being a parent. That's right being there when your kid comes home from school on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and they're upset that they got bullied in school and you teach them how to deal with it. They're mad that they got a teacher who's a bitch and they want to deal with it. They got too much homework. They failed the test. Being there for all those things and teaching them how to get through it, that is what being a parent is. Not going out for dinner at, fr at Friendly's because you buy the adult dinner and the child dinner is free on Wednesday night. That's not being a parent. Let's talk about some of these serious flaws in the child support law because the conditions to which uh, a payer, whether it be a mother or a father, a payer, the non-custodial parent has to pay into this thing. We should include both parents. We should be fair about that. Um, what are some of the things that are seriously flawed within it? Well, the whole system, to me, is flawed because it costs the same amount to feed a child. To feed, let's, let's talk about food. It talks the same amount to feed a child who lives in Wyandanne, Brentwood, Central Islip, costs the same thing to feed them as it does to feed the kid who lives in Great Neck, Lloyd Harbor, or Roslyn, right? The hamburger costs the same thing. They all want to go to White Castle. You're going to make the dinner. So it doesn't cost any more to feed the kid. Now, there's definitely differences in housing requirements and keeping up Special with classes, maybe. With, with the Joneses, but yeah. that's not what, to me, the child support should be the basic needs of the kid. And, and the way I get at this is when the state takes care of a child, meaning the parent goes on welfare. What do they do? They don't say, well, listen, Johnny was living in Roslyn, so we should give him $3,000 a month for food. But Stephen is living in Center Reach, so that's a lot less. We're, we're only going to give him $200 for food. No. 
their formula is this is what we give a child who's on welfare and it's a very low number it's actually too low to really sustain but it's a very low number so why is it that when a, when the government is not paying all of a sudden we have to go by their income and determine you know and, and other things they like to use in the court we talk about these scams it's this scam the best it's part of the under the best interest is that we want to keep the standard of living of the child the same well that sounds great doesn't it it's great for them when it's somebody else's money isn't it because what happens let's go back to the same thing you have a family living in in Lloyd Harbor the father or the mother or both loses their job now they go on social services can you go to social services and say Social services, my taxes are $48,000 a year. God forbid my kids, I don't want them to have to change their standard of living. Social services, you need to pay my $48,000 a year taxes. And, uh, they would say, what, are you crazy? Totally Go live in a motel. <laughs> so, but, so, right, it's, it's not, right. so it's hypocritical of the government, who this is the government, right, right. to say that we care about uh, maintaining the lifestyle of the child. Because it's sometimes, listen, in a perfect world, on a perfect world, who wouldn't want everybody to have this? I want every kid to be rich, like we but said, it can't happen. Like we said in a prior show here about that situation, is that there's not a, a, it's not reasonable to consider that everybody's in the same. It's also not pattern. life, Chris. To be honest with you, yeah. And to some extent, it's it, it's it's harmful to teach a kid that their standard of living will never change, regardless of what happens, That's right. regardless or mom and dad lose their job, regardless of if there's a, a death in the family. So, sometimes a parent dies and the standard of living goes down because they didn't have life insurance, well, the right? the custodial parent has a serious disease and the non-custodial doesn't. Listen, how many times do we know somebody <laughs> goes on, on disability, right? And they, now their pay is a quarter of what it used to be. Well, guess what? They don't drive the Mercedes anymore, right? They don't drive the Porsche. They, they drive a, an average car and they don't go out to dinner as often. This is life. I like that part of the Child Support Standards Act says, I took this one quote, both parents will be required to assume a fair share of the child support. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> Anybody who's been in that situation knows that that's not true. Absolutely. Now, of course, it's nice when it could happen, but very rarely does, does the other party, the party receiving the, amount of, the award, I'll call it, right. that's what it well, is. Well, it isn't an award because you won. It is the award. You won. I know. Won. That's what I'm saying. You know, Whatever winning is. So that's exactly right. You brought up an interesting point in a conversation I had with you before about HIPAA. Could you go into that a little bit? Well, one, one of the issues is currently in New York State, the emancipation age of a child, which is the age at which the parents have responsibility to care for that child, is 21 or until they graduate a four-year college, but under no circumstances past the 22nd birthday. Right. So it's either 22, but for argument's sakes, let's say it's And by the way, that changes. It's another one of those laws that uh, changed and gradually Right, it used to be 18. Time. People who got 18, divorced 20 right. years ago. It was, eight, it was 18 for me. It, it was right. 18. So now people, now they raised it to 21. Well, why they do that? Now you get the father to pay for you know three or four more years, or the one parent to pay, they make more money. It's all about Many money, states, right? though, have said, well, how can this be? Because federal law, the federal government says, at 18, you're an adult, right? If you commit a crime, you're responsible. And at 18, you can be charged as an adult, right? You can go in the Army. You know, there's, there's many things you could do at 18 because you're considered an adult. When you're 17, your parents can go to your doctor and say, oh, I'd like to see my child's medical records. I'd like to get information. They call up the doctor and say, doctor, can I get my information on my 14-year-old child? They, they, they can give it to the uh, custodial parents. Well, because the federal law is 18, so now your child turns 18. They go to the doctor. Well, now you're not entitled to see your kid's medical records anymore unless they sign a HIPAA release. So let's say, for example, your divorce says, which many do, the non-custodial parent pays X percentage of um, medical bills. Well, the law also says you have to see the bill and see that it was paid, right? So you get the bill and you look at it, wait a minute, here's a gynecologist bill and half the bill is cut off. Ex scared, that may have scared the right away. I want to see, I see what's going on what, right What's away. going on? I see a bill here for $900. Did my, is my daughter sexually active and got an abortion? Is my daughter on Preg birth control pills? Does my daughter have a sexually transmitted disease? Whatever it is. Yeah. I want to know because I'm paying for it, right? Yeah. Maybe some people's religion says, I don't want my daughter being on birth control pills. I don't want my daughter getting the Gardasil shot. But Important you have no right point. to know anymore. So wait a minute. So I don't have the right to know, but I have to pay. What is that? You're an ATM. 
Insurance companies know. That's confiscation. They, insurance company course. would an insurance company pay if you sent the bill with just the person's name on the top and a dollar amount on the bottom? They would well, say, no, I'm not going to pay. Tell invest? me what I'm paying for. What if the daughter was either drinking or maybe using marijuana or something like that? Anything. Something that you, you should have the right to know. If you don't have the right to know, then that's you shouldn't right. be responsible. You shouldn't be responsible to pay. So you it, can't have it both ways. Twenty-one. And, and furthermore, let me just go go yeah. into it. Furthermore, the government actually agrees with me, right? Because when somebody goes on disability, guess what? The emancipation age is eighteen. The child gets benefits from that parent until the child turns eighteen. At eighteen, the federal government says you're now an adult. We don't give you benefits anymore. But why is it when the private person, the mother or father, the non-custodial spouse? the non-custodial parent for them screw the 18 we're going to make you pay till 21 or 22. pick which one it is it's we're, hypocritical we're, we're fodder for the system right it's you hypocritical know, just, yeah um okay there's there's been a narrative of how tough it is for mothers uh the food is what the food is like to be at home and what what it is to take care of them there's the overall consensus that the mothers are you know they need to be supported i think right. i think everybody realizes that well i don't i don't realize that actually well, okay. no well, i i think that, i think that if if you want to give if first of all I, be, I believe home. Well, i believe let me, in shared let me, parenting. let me back that up i'm sorry i missed something they should be at home if they're at home they can use whatever support they can get Taking care of the kids, whatever right. support they can. Oh yeah, I'm not talking about necessarily dollars. But same same case. thing with a father, you know. If and it's if they reversed. agree to that, if it's right? Reversed. If it's reversed, same but 80, thing. But eighty percent of the awards are still going to women, so I'm just saying in a general right. sense, I'm using the general. But if there was fifty, listen, if there's fifty presumption to fifty percent, uh, fifty fifty, theoretically, men and women are supposed to get paid the same thing. Now, of course, we know there's not the equality right, yet, right. but it's it's getting it's getting sure, close. closer. Than it's than definitely before, getting closer. Right. So if that's the case, and it's this isn't about a father's rights, it's a quality issue. So if that's the if that's the case and both parents would have it to really they both have the potential to make more money there really shouldn't be a lot of money going back and forth now clearly if the father is making 150,000 and the mother is making 30,000 and they have the kids 50 50 yes some money should probably go to the other party to help help that out uh, a little bit but it would prob probably happen anyway but of course if the father we we'll use that example says you know what I'm a businessman I don't want to have custody of my kids let my ex-wife have them I'll see them Wednesday for dinner and every other weekend sure they should pay more and, and have to do that but we're talking about when you take away the person the father's right to be a parent and you screw them and say now you got to pay Right. That's just not right. That's it's a double whammy. It's, it's 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 unfair. Well, if the best interest doesn't say anything about uh, what what we think is well, important, isn't the best interest having both parents in their life? It's loving is having a loving family. Well, money. Listen, how many rich people do we know? Listen, we can go through and watch on the news all day long. All these rich families that have all the money in the world, and all they have is tragedy. And then look at the Kennedys, right? Yeah. You know, all the tragedy, all these families. There is no study that will tell you that money equals happiness. Right. If you would ask a child, would you rather have a brand new BMW in the family and a big mansion and just have one parent, or would you rather have a mother and father who love each other, spend time together? Of course you need money to be comfortable. We're not, you know, we're not talking about you know, making you know, no money and being in poverty, but having enough money to, to live. Listen, you can do things for free and go to the, How many people, their best memory is just going to a park? If you sure. ask what the best memory sure. is, it's not going to the most expensive restaurant. It's spending time with your family doing something. That's almost what people, sure. you know, my fondest you know, memories are growing up or spending time with my family down at the marina. That's what my memories are. Ha having uh, my family watch me hit a home run in the All-Star game. You didn't know, cost anything. So, so yeah. money does not equal happiness. That's, that's absolutely clear. Well, we have a, uh, a lot to handle then that's probably going to have to run to another show, but based on what the Child Support Standards Act has done to the non-custodial parent, let's try and keep it in that zone. Um, we've created a class, and some of the legislators were saying back at that time that this two is it, it impacts unequally. This we're creating a second class, a non-custodial parent right. class. We see that clearly now, right? Oh, of course. Who talk? Who else talks about it? Right. No, no. It's well, just, it's just us. It's, be, it's, be, it's been going on so long. It's just become that. It, it is it's what it part is. Part of the divorce culture, I always talk about. Listen, you, know, you get the divorce. Acquired knowledge. Go to a restaurant on a Wednesday night. Chris. In. What? Go to a restaurant on a Wednesday night. Yeah. Filled with fathers sitting there with their kids. Right. And uh, you know, and you see them all the time, and there's more and more. Yeah. What's happening there? I mean, when you're talking about what a culture is like, when you see that going on, did that happen when you were a kid? Right. No. No. And it scares me it's that it's new. become norm. It's become the norm. It's become the norm. It's, it scares right. me that when a mother loses custody, everybody goes, "Oh my God, it's horrible." 
that's because it's acceptable that the man just loses custody. That's right. Now, now it's happening where the other way, where now the women are losing custody. You know, not 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 at the same rate, but women are losing custody quite a bit. You know, sure. at a, whatever percentage, ten. You could argue. I'm not going to even get into the number because, but but women are losing custody now. Yeah, it seems to be increasing for some reason. I always think that they're trying to make up for the errors that they made. Yeah, they made. But either way, they're they're and it's horrible when you see a woman. They're either devastated. Way. Oh yeah, I, because I, they're not used to it yet. I don't want them to get used to it. I don't it. want them to get used to it. I don't want anybody yeah. to get used right. to it. I don't want anybody to get used I, to it. I wanted to say, hey, this is enough already. We realize what's wrong. And maybe maybe having mothers lose custody is what makes people realize that this is not a good system. And if mothers would re start to realize more, and I see it a little bit more and more now, people will go to mediators and will settle out of court yeah. because the, the lawyers will say, it used to be nobody knew a mother who lost custody, right? So the woman would go, like my ex-wife, she went into court saying, I'm going to win. Mothers always win. You're going to be out of the house, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Now women will look and say, you know what? I know the lady down the street. I know a lady at work. I saw a lady on the internet. She lost custody. And the lawyers will not guarantee anymore. Lawyers used to say, that eh, 98% chance you're going to get custody. Don't worry about it. Now a smart lawyer will say to a woman, hey, I can't guarantee it. It's not 50-50, but you could lose custody. And those deals, we don't want to get into it too deeply about the forensics, but some of those deals are made by the forensics who evaluate right. the custody, custodial parents. But I'm just saying that, that, that you get more settlements, I believe, yeah. now yeah. of shared custody because because a lot of times the mother will say, you know what, I could lose custody. I, I counsel people. When they tell me, I'm going to win custody, so why would I go for shared custody? I said, you may be right. Let's just say you're 90% Right. Would you take that 10% chance? You want to take a 10% chance that you're going to be reduced to Wednesday night dinners? It's math. So I tell people, go for the shared custody. It's the best interest of the child. That is what's in the best With interest. One of the uh, legislators that said also, again, back in the original uh, writing of the, of the child support bill is, my children of today would be better off financially if they were parents were divorced if the bill went defected. If he, mm. he said that if I got divorced, my kids would be better off. Well, it's what a way to think. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's. I mean, listen. But I have. He's I have really right. People call me many. First of all, isn't there an incentive now for for the for the person who says, "Look, hey, if I get divorced, I never have to worry about money because that child support's going to come in every month. The alimony, regardless of whether he makes money or he doesn't make money, the courts are going to make him pay. Whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever it is. Of course, the reality is they can't. Like in Dr. Carlos Rivera's case, sometimes you can't. Right. Right. So you can't, and then you kill the golden goose. <laughs> Which is what his wife did. How about what? But I digress. <laughs> <laughs> That's another show. That's another show. We'll get to that at some other point in the future. But Helene Weinstein, who's the chair of the judiciary, has been running this program. Was the chair, right. Running the acts. Yeah, I forgot who it was. Just a man-hating piece of shit lawyer. She, there was, Disgusting oh human God, being. She, she should rot too. in hell. There Helene was Weinstein. somewhere in the vicinity of 40 or 50 laws all had something to do with how much more they can attach to the non to, to the non-custodial parent. Yeah, just, how many more different ways well, they can attach. Let me tell you, Chris, just like... Carlos Rivera's ex-wife, Catherine Cartwright Rivera, killed the Golden Goose. That's what Helene Weinstein started to do. Because now it's going back the other way, where people are saying enough is enough already. There, you know, there's national media starting what to cover stories like that. What a way to train a culture. Like this, they, she trained right. the culture she in, did. in a lot of ways. That's she did. Not didn't didn't want to hear it. Culture of divorce. But you cannot talk about the needs of the children. You have to look at the income <laughs> that is available. That sent off to me a holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit. You're going to just look at money. You're not going to look about any influence at all. You're not going to look about the possibility of a father-child relationship, which yeah. might develop. Wouldn't, wouldn't it make sense to have an incentive for the parents to be involved? Like, hey, listen, you, you're going to only pay a lot if you don't see your kid. What's the incentive <laughs> we have, right? There's no incentive to, to, to see the kid. In fact, it pushes you away from, from the child because you're disgusted that you have no money. And when all these parents on Long Island, non-custodial parents who can't keep up with this crazy amount of money, end up living in a basement of somebody's apartment and their kids don't want to come see them because the custodial parent is living in the marital house, living high on the hog, and the non-custodial parent is living in their mother's basement. In, f in fairness, every now and then they're not living high on the hog, but for, in reality, for the most part, that is absolutely true and that's unfair. I know a lot of fathers who are in basements. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. And, it, it's and when the kid has to come and visit, where's he coming? They don't to visit? like it. Do you blame them? No, nope. and they, where they have to go. Right. Yeah. They, they can't bring their friends over there, they there's no, they don't have the games. Kind of they have. The part, the parent so has no money. Too, that it's, are like it's that. very, especially in Long Island, where the house, the housing prices are insane. You know, that's why. I, that's I, not taken into consideration. Don't they ever think about? You know, I, I, I get, I, I get upset, and, and you may have heard me say when people go, when people will say, uh, people who aren't in the system go, well, it's all about the kids, 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 kids. Hmm. What about the parents? Are, are you not entitled to happiness? No, you're, you're allowed to. We die. have a constitutional right to the right. It doesn't matter. The <laughs> right to pursue you have no life, rules, liberty, no life. and happiness. But everybody says the kid. It sounds good. Yeah. Of course, the kids come first, and we want to. 
but you're entitled because you get divorced that doesn't mean your life should be destroyed forever and most of us will never catch up from this hole we're put in that's for sure I wish there was some other way that we could uh, address this but the only way that I know is my way is to do the ch is to mediate you know yep. get the get the people out of court but, I, but so the problem with, with mediation that. having the court the way it is now is people use that as uh, as a red line for example many times in the back of their head they're saying well I know if I go to court and I win win I'm gonna get 21 percent 22 percent forget all those numbers if you make it a mandatory or peremptory first position that's what I always say make it a first position I still position think the court's got I, the court has got to stop with this mandatory number that doesn't take anything into consideration there's got to be a cap on the number what are you talking about the, the uh, child the CSA yeah because oh. that because then, then the parents could sit down and just figure forget out what, about the numbers out what their future's gonna let's be like. look at how much you make how much I make and what we're gonna do and yeah. it almost always you can come up with something that absolutely works absolutely always does Surprisingly, in many of the uh, divorces I've handled, the, the numbers actually fluctuate based on what they think they're putting in. They actually look at it fairly. Right. You know what? I got, a, I got a job that takes me away this many hours. I go here, I travel there. I think it's unreasonable for me to be f forced to spend a certain amount of time. It's just an unreasonable thing. It, it also can change. The number can, you know, right. you can go back Especially to media. Especially in sales or something like because, that. Because, yeah. listen, you know, numbers go up in that. I mean, one of the things that drives me crazy is when people go to court and they agree to a number to child support. And I say, your kids are what, six years old? Okay, so you're gonna be paying for the next, what, 15, 14 years? You're gonna be paying child support? Chris, w were you making the same thing t eight, nine, 10 years? Know, Who knows what we're gonna make? To hopefully, we'll do better, the economy will do better, but you can't predict what you're gonna make. Absolutely You can't, not, I wish no. we could. But the old days of everybody making 5% more every year, those days are over, I but the courts aren't receptive to I that. I think they were looking at people who were union people who had a guarantee well, of income. Well, Chris, contracts. who's making the decision? The judge, who they have no real job. I know because they get. The, it doesn't matter what the economy does. The judges get a raise. They just got a big raise because they're doing such a great job, yeah, right? Aren't they? So they. So now <laughs> they all got a. They still get their benefits. Their paycheck is guaranteed to come in. They make their own hours. So they're they're removed from reality. If they weren't a judge and they were a lawyer, well, guess what? I would say they make more than the average person also. They probably when, do. I mean, we got lawyers charging $450 an hour. That's not the average person. You brought a point to me in our conversation before I wrote it down. I didn't get a chance to pose it as a question, but you said the kids are dependent on the money for the bond building, removes the father's credibility as a provider or the mother's, right. or the mother, I should say, the parent's credibility as a provider and doesn't look at the parent. Well, I'm not a psychologist, but I do play one on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but from my experience, you know, one of the things that child, a child, part of the bond is that the child, especially as a baby, right, they live on the mother's milk if they're breastfeeding, and that builds a bond that their, their only source of food sure. is their mother's breast milk. And that's natural, that, that builds a bond. The natural progression is as they get older, they realize, well, dad's going out and bringing the dead animal home in the old days, <laughs> but now bringing home the food and feeding me and this is the way it works it's a transition through life and mom may be more comforting every family has different dynamics I'm totally talking in generalities right, right. but obviously men don't breastfeed so that part is true um, so usually when the mother is home at the beginning the father's bringing home the bread and, and the kids learn that that's part of the bond dad's going to work and he's providing for me well now dad is out of the house dad pays money to CS child support enforcement unit child support enforcement unit takes the money and gives it to the mother so now the mother goes out and the mother buys the groceries when they need money they go to mom because dad has no more money so that breaks the bond and not only does it and to show it to what really really emphasizes this I'll tell you a, a quick story if I have time I'm, get, I'm getting the minute yeah. so I was in court with uh, with dr. Carlos Rivera a, a few weeks ago actually it's come, come back a couple months ago now and his ex-wife was saying how well he didn't pay money he didn't give me money for this whole period of time and the child support lady said yes he did he gave this much money to the thing and she says no he did not give me any money yeah. and the judge says but ma'am it's on the books that he did she goes that wasn't from him that came from child support enforcement unit yeah. she was even disconnected yeah. Yeah. that he, he worked and earned the money and they took it out of his paycheck how disconnected were his children you, you gonna be that's right you can't third generation three incredible. down there's a total disconnect. Thanks very much, Gary Jacobs. The rules. I was for just getting started. I know. Well, yeah, you, you can't. Now, we're <laughs> out of here. The rules for collection are confiscatory and capricious and not tied to the needs. Very, very critical. You've been watching FIT TV, the program that brings you behind the scenes of our divorce culture. And FIT, you know, you cannot get this information on your own, so we'll bring it to your TV every single week. Just like this it was a great show. <laughs> right? My name is Chris DiMaggio. Thank you for watching FIT TV, and we'll see you again next week.